calendar. How important is it for you that people see your life set, your life at play? Of course, the most important thing is the music itself. So you can listen to it without looking at the live set, but um, it's also nice to look at, but I hope the music speaks for itself as well. What exactly made you build your own controller? So which problems do you solve with that? Yeah, well, most important thing I wanted to do was to get rid of the screen. So I don't want to have okay. a laptop on stage. So you have to think that one away. Um, I can while I'm doing my live set, I can modulate every parameter I want to modulate with the controllers I built and um, gives you much more direct access to the music as well as to the audience, I think. Your live set is obviously a little bit different from other controllers. Um, how did you build it? How was it done? First, well, I started with board controllers, at Behringer, BCR, I think it's called. Yeah. And um, then I quickly realized that if you really want to be able to control all the parameters in real time, you need something bigger, much more knobs, and you need something which is easy, easy to look at, where you can get a lot of information in a very short time, um, which doesn't go too much into detail, so I don't want to read anything while I'm doing a live set, I just want to look at what's happening. The process itself of, of of making the music is very much related to the to the instrument you play on and I wanted to do something where it's a surprise for you as well every time you play you can generate something different and you do not just play part by part but you can really mix as you go and you can develop the arrangement out of the, out of the moment Would you also say that you do a lot of improvising there? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I start and um, I don't know what's coming actually Yeah. So. I have it prepared, but it can be different each time, and each time I am surprised in a way of some sounds which I've never heard in that way before or in that combination before. On some days your results are just much better? or Yeah, so. sure, sure. I'm just human. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got your good days you? and your bad days. <laughs> <laughs> Mechatronic warrior. <laughs> okay. I'd like to know a little bit more now about your control that you built yourself. Can you maybe describe what you do with those three parts? three parts well the main part obviously is this thing um, where I have the main parts of my set it's divide, divided into different groups this is the the buttons to change between the different groups of channels that I have oh, okay right and these are channels of instruments mm -hmm. and they're composed I think everybody works with starting with a kick you go over the snare then you have the hi-hat right. you have the bass lines some pads and then you can go and combine, let's say, we today we want to play the, the violet, pad, violet pad and on the left side we change to the blue one and use the blue kick, there we go. What would be the role of the other parts? Are they just extensions or what do they do? This one is um, an extension, it's mainly an effect station where you can put effects on the sounds that I generate and I have also loops which I, can, which I cannot modulate as much as the loops in the main part but which I can use for let's say yeah, background in my track. The effect section is here. Press the button and you get a sound. Okay, so effect is more like effect sounds, it's not like a a delay on a track or so. Yeah, it can also be. Let me. Uh... Yeah. And the third section is for live generation of patterns, melodies, where I can generate melodies on the go, like a light keyboard mm -hmm. with, um, I think I even used the Ableton scale filter, I'm not sure, okay. for generating oh, yeah, right. the scale that I need. Mm -hmm. And I can also loop that. Okay, very good. Yeah. 
There we go. Do you save a lot of parameters at one time that you have to recall or how do you work? I don't actually. I prepare every channel that I use in a way that I know what happens when I turn which button and I can return to the defaults quite quickly but um, in order to load different songs, different tracks I put on the different tracks in here. So I just have a whole lot of channels or different tracks in my Ableton Live set. I guess it's about 200. When you are in a set you're just stuck and then you have your parameters and they're fixed so uh, it could uh, turn monotonous with the time. Well, monotony is not always bad. I mean, especially in minimal techno. I think there are different ways. You can modulate the sound. I can go to another set. Um, I can change the sound in a way that it doesn't sound as the sound I used before. Or also, what you can do is you can mostly, if you have, for me, if you have a good instrument, it sounds very well in. in in different pitches as well, so you can play with that as well. So you can use it very high pitched, very low pitched. How do you do build up and breakdowns to make the sound interesting? I think there, um, speaking of monotony, especially in break ups and, and build ups, it's, it's important that you use different, different ways of doing it. So you can have a great, you can have great drop by just putting in the bass line again if it's in the right moment. It all, it all depends on the moment you perform, I think. It depends on the... You look at your audience and you think, okay, what do I do? Do I do the big noisy part or do I do the small part where it's just silent and then I bring in the kick and bass line again and that's just great. So, on the one hand, you can, I can do effects like I showed before. Oh, let's do the classical uh, repetition. Some beat repeat. Yeah. Right. You take on some instruments. That is all about your creativity, so especially in the brakes. You're pretty free. Really, it's improvise on the arrangement. That's the most important part. Important part. So the whole plot of the music is done on the fly, and that's especially, yeah. of course, the build-ups. Your Ableton set. Do you want to talk about it, or uh, <laughs> is that one of the secrets of Under? I'd love to talk about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go then. Well, so many channels. Yeah, if you have a look at it, you can see it's uh, pretty much organized. So the most important part of the set is that it's uh, quite strictly organized in, in, in channels and in different categories of which... And colors also. Which knob does what, and the colors as well, yeah. Yeah. So I got the yellow set, I got the green set. And that corresponds with the, with the set, actually. Yeah. Right? Ableton just had the right colors. <laughs> okay. To keep an overview of the, all these channels, of all the different sounds, is that I structure them in a way that it's very similar. So I know what to expect when I turn the knob. That's the most important. Of course I know my sounds as well, but for every change I do with one of these knobs, I, I, I can sort of... I, I, I know what type of change I do to the sound. Mm, right. I think that's the most important in my Ableton set. The rest is... it's, let's say, 98% Ableton. Almost no external synthesizers. It's yeah. all made in Ableton. A um, couple of samples, but mostly yeah, the Ableton instruments that are there. Okay, talking of the instruments, um, I see a beautiful rack down there. It's a and, rack uh, in a rack in a rack in a rack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically, you get around with those eight parameters that are there for each track uh, at the beginning, because you know, is that the way you do it? I do, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but behind each one of these knobs is mostly, it's, it's very heavy mapping, so sometimes I control, I don't know, maybe eight to ten parameters just with one knob. 
That's it for the moment. I would like to know the future of Ender. How can this get better? I mean... Yeah, I think the controller part is uh, mostly finished, let's say. Um, now it's more about the performance. So okay. Next big news is uh, that Ander will be playing in New York at the Knitting Factory beginning of November. We from uh, Ableton Live User Zurich wish you all the best for your projects overseas and here. Thank you very much for your interview and all the best for the future. Thank you.